PK, now that you've had eight months to reconcile the trade, how do you accept what happened, the trade from Montreal? I think that, you know, for me personally, if we're just talking about the hockey side, um, you know, when I was drafted, I, I said I wanted to win a Stanley Cup there. And um, to the day that I was traded, that was probably the toughest thing to walk away from is feeling that, you know, you didn't have an opportunity or enough. You weren't able to fulfill that. Um, promise that you made to the fans and not only fans but teammates you know players that I played with for a long time that you know basically we've said to each other that we're going to win a cup together and um, so that kind of sucked you know not being able to fulfill that promise. The Habs had that late season collapse last year in any way do you feel you were a scapegoat? Um, I don't know you know I, 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 I probably there's so many different people that have opinions on it and I think I've always maintained the idea and I've always been taught to take the high road in, in any situation where you know things can be portrayed in a negative way and I always look at it positive you know as far as why I got traded I mean you'll never know you know I thought I was going to be there for a long time and but that's the nature of the business and now I'll be in Nashville hopefully for a long time. PK after the trade Carey Price was interviewed and this is what he said about you. You know, he's an offensive defenseman and a risk taker, and that's made him successful. That's the way he plays the game. It's, he doesn't want to change that. But the way we're coached on our team, the way our team is structured, that's not what we're looking for. Did that surprise you at all? No, I think it made a lot of sense, actually. Maybe people tried to spin it in a negative way, but I, I know Kerry personally, so I, I, I understood exactly what he meant. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Montreal's building their team a certain way, and I just wasn't a part of it. So why that is, I don't know. You know, I always look at myself as a player that, that can play in, in all situations, and I, I never limit myself to just playing the game a certain way. The detractors would say PK should just focus on hockey, not worry about growing his brand. What's your response to them? Well, it, you know what, I'd have two responses. If I, if I wanted to be blunt, I would tell them, you know, to mind their own business and, and worry about themselves. But um, I, that's not really me. So I, I think that the more we understand that everybody is different, then, you know, then that just kind of puts everything to rest. Some guys want to think about hockey 24-7, and that doesn't make them any more dedicated than somebody who has other interests outside the game when they leave the rink. You know, as long as you show up to play, from 7 till 10, uh, you know, you, you show up on time, you come to practice, you're a professional in every sense of the word, you know, then the rest doesn't really matter. Is it fair to say your gregarious personality has been more embraced in Nashville, certainly from a team perspective, than it maybe was in Montreal? You know, when I got there, they said, we don't want you to change. We want you to be who you are. And I think sometimes you do personal reflection on yourself and you think about, like, you know, am I that much different than everybody? <laughs> I think the, the consensus is always to put the jersey before yourself and I don't ever remember a moment where I ever thought when I played for the Canadians of putting myself ahead of that, you know, it just doesn't really make sense. But in Nashville, it's just been, yeah, we embrace everybody. How much different is your relationship with your current coach, Peter Laviolette, compared to the relationship you have with Michelle Therrien? You're going to have different relationships with different coaches based on their personalities and their coaching style. Um, you know, is it better though with Peter? Oh, uh, it's positive for sure. I mean, um, he's won a Stanley Cup. So my attitude coming into this team was I'm just going to do exactly what I've told. And I think that uh, speaking to a lot of players that have played for Lavi, it's, it's very positive. His ability to not just to critique you, not just, you know, to tell you when you're doing well, but build you up and understand you as a person. I guess that's why he's been so successful and why he's won so much and why he's won a cup. PK, you talked about the self-reflection upon being traded. What were you reflecting on? Well, y everybody self-reflects. I think if you don't, if you don't self-reflect, you're not being real with yourself, you know. When I think about whether I would change things or do things differently, um, I live my life with no regrets um, because I live my life here. You know, so for me, uh, I didn't self-reflect too long. I, I didn't have to convince myself that, um, you know, I did anything wrong. I just being myself and sometimes being yourself, you, things happen, you know, and I'm not saying that's the reason I got traded, but I can look at myself in the mirror and feel pretty good about some of the things that I've done both on and off the ice. I know you're a cool guy. You don't get nervous really often, at least outwardly. What kind of reception are you expecting on Thursday? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, 
Going into it, I think uh, I'm excited, that's for sure. I'm excited to go back to the Bell Centre and play, and I'm excited to see the fans. I mean, uh, uh, you think about it, my last game in a Montreal Canadian jersey, I was, you know, carted off on a stretcher, so um, to be able to step back on the ice and, and play a game, it'll, it'll be special. PK, I appreciate it. Best of luck to you, and thank you so much for doing this. All right, thanks, All right. David. Thanks a lot. Yeah.